Sketches are the backbone of any parametric model, and sketch constraints are what give that backbone stability and predictability. Out of the box, Inventor applies sketch constraints very well, but there are changes that should be made to the defaults, as well as periodic changes that may need to be made as a particular design warrants. The constraint settings in the sketch environment control the behavior of the sketch constraints and are conveniently located within the sketch tab. Double click the constraint settings sketch in the browser to activate it. On the ribbon, Sketch tab, Constraint panel, select the Constraint Settings command and the Constraint Settings dialog box opens. On the General tab in the Constraint Group box, there are three settings. When selected, Display Constraints on Creation shows all constraints that are inferred as you are sketching so that you can see them as you sketch. This is very helpful and should be selected no matter what your skill level is. The next option is Show Constraints for Selected Objects. This option allows for the selection of a sketch entity to reveal all of its constraints. This is a big time saver, is very helpful, and should always be selected. The last option in the constraint group is Display Coincident Constraints in Sketch. Most people leave this one off because it can make the sketch very busy, but you may want to turn it on while learning as it will give you a visual confirmation that coincident constraints have been placed. In the Dimension Group box, both options should be checked. The first one, Edit Dimension when created, will open the Edit Dimension dialog automatically when a dimension is placed, where you can enter the value of the dimension. The second option here, Create Dimensions from Input Values, allows you to type a dimension in the Heads Up Display input box during sketch creation, and when Enter is pressed, the value becomes a dimension without ever leaving the command. In the Over Constrained Dimensions group box, you can choose between Apply Driven Dimension and Warn of Over Constrained Condition. Make sure that Apply Driven Dimension is selected. You will know what is happening either way, and this option allows you to create useful driven dimensions without an annoying warning. Switch to the Inference tab. In the main area, leave both the Infer and Persist constraints checked. It is unlikely that you will ever need to deselect this option. Now look in the Constraint Inference Priority group box. The two choices here are Horizontal and Vertical and Parallel and Perpendicular. Parallel and Perpendicular is the default setting but is also an accident waiting to happen and should almost never be selected. The reasons are numerous, but the main one is that the constraints are placed based on other geometry and are daisy-chained throughout the sketch. Deleting any geometry can therefore have a cascading effect, causing the loss of sometimes hundreds of constraints. Be sure to select Horizontal and Vertical. In the Selection for Constraint Inference group box, you can select which constraints have the ability to be inferred while you are sketching. Without tangent selected, drawing an arc at the end of a line will not attempt to place a tangent constraint. Click Select All if these are not selected already. There will be few to no instances where you would not want all of these selected. Now. Click the Relax Mode tab. Relax Mode is disabled by default and should remain that way unless you are in the process of reworking a sketch or fixing a broken one. You will not likely have to use this dialog very often unless you are repairing broken sketches. It is highly recommended that you set your option as shown in this lesson, then leave them alone unless you have a very good reason to change them with the exception of the settings on the Relax Mode tab, 
where you should use the settings as needed, then turn relax mode back off again when you are done.